All right, here's a look at using Grobato to uh, set up a model for some hard surface sculpting in ZBrush. Um, we're going to use uh, some of Grobato's special mesh smoothing options, what we call smooth styling, which does more than smoothing, actually adds some character to seams and such. The model itself, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but I'll just tell you it was put together with these flex tools, including this, this one, which just allows you to stretch and snap rods to nodes, and that's how the basic structure was built up. And once I had the basic structure, um, I used the full flex tools, which allow you to manipulate the whole model with influence tools. Um, you set a anchor point, that's the far point of your influence, and then you drag somewhere else and those little red lines tell you the extent of the, uh, the range of the uh, flex tool. You can change that dynamically while you're playing here and you can also just choose to drag from a different point. If I drag near the anchor you'll see it changes only those local areas as opposed to dragging far away or I can change the anchor point. Move around that sort of thing. Now you can see this is <clears throat> kind of fun and kind of wild and you can attach all sorts of additional geometry to this thing. Use it essentially like a skeleton. Here we've kept it simple because again we're, we're going to concentrate on uh, exporting this thing and uh, some of what we can get out of the Grobato's mesh. Um, but uh, as long as we're here, you, the flex tools also work with uh, rotation and with reshaping. And here I'm using it to uh, do a graduated uh, reshaping of parts of this structure. And uh, any and all of this can be meshed automatically, so you're free to play and explore when you're in that phase. But anyway, we're back to the uh, saved model here. And uh, it's set up for fairly high density mesh output, which will support what we're doing. It has a fairly wide seam width, and the seam rows are four. That's important. Having some extra seam rows, um, those are it's like an edge loop, um, will help us do some of the uh, sculpting that we want to do. And we've got smoothing turned on, and then very importantly, we've got these uh, seam masking UVs and smooth seam UVs boxes checked. Uh, so we'll go ahead and preview this mesh. Those seam masking UVs and smooth seam uh, UVs uh, provide the model with a, a set of uh, UV coordinates that are used together with simple texture maps, as you'll see in a moment in ZBrush, to allow us to mask the seams and treat them uh, differently in a special way when we uh, when we start sculpting. And here you see those seams. You see the multiple um, parallel rolls on the uh, edge loops. And you'll also notice if you look closely that they have quite a bit of character. They kind of dip and uh, change density and uh, flow around the objects. Uh, that's all a result of that smoothing, that smooth styling as we call it. And uh, all of that is going to lead to some, uh, going to lead to some fun when we, when we get to the sculpting phase. And uh, those extra rows will help us keep our sculpting um, confined to these seam areas and uh, give us some really nice um, crisp and controllable edges, crisp or, or smooth or whatever you want to do with them, but uh, the important thing being that you have those extra rows so that when you modify or interpolate or whatever, you, uh, you can uh, tightly control the effect. And uh, here I've switched to uh, OpenGL Smooth Shading. It in some ways gives you a better idea of uh, what the actual surface the mesh surface is that we have gen generated. And you can see that uh, at all those joints there's a there's a, a slight depression, a little channel. Uh, again, that's a, that's a result of the uh, particular smooth uh, styling settings that we had when we generated the mesh. And uh, with all that in place, we're ready to go ahead and export the object. Uh, just pick a file name and a folder and uh, we're going to uh, create an OBJ file, which we will uh, go into ZBrush and uh, play with. So off we go. So this is just a uh, normal import into ZBrush, normal OBJ import with the default settings. Nothing special needs to be done. Just bring in the OBJ we just saved. And uh, there you see it. Um, you could subdivide this, and there are some advantages to that, uh, depending on what kind of uh, level of detail you want. But... Uh, it's fine to go ahead and sculpt it right away at this point. Um, we'll turn uh, symmetry on. That was uh, X 
symmetry, which is what you always get out of a Grobato export. And um, now we're going to go uh, get a texture map. And these are texture maps that uh, I created. They're very simple. They're just gradients, uh, black to white, with uh, different depth of the gradient, different spread of the gradient. And that just allows me to mask out uh, different parts, uh, uh, different seam rows. Uh, all of them are just the ones in the center. And, and here we're using a fairly narrow mask. So as you can see, if you look closely there, you'll see the seam rows. And you'll see that the texture doesn't reach out all the way to the end of the seam rows. It's, it's concentrated in the center, and it, and it fades out a little bit. So you'll affect all probably but that outermost row. And with that in place, with the texture on, all we have to do is turn on Mask by Intensity in the Masking Panel, Masking Palette, and uh, then we can go ahead and turn the texture off. So we can take a look and see indeed what our mask looks like. And again, very similar, uh, concentrated in the center of the seams. So now we've got a mask that uh, protects the seams and we can manipulate the uh, rest of the geometry while leaving the seams, uh, at least their central parts, untouched. Um, I'm going to use the magnify tool here and with just a couple little uh, pulses of that brush uh, there you see we have instantly created a uh, quite detailed little bit of articulation with these uh, primitive forms plugging into one another with nice bevels and ridges and uh, cavities uh, you can see the seam rows coming into play there um, and that's one reason why I like to work uh, without subdividing at this point. You get a little bit crisper, uh, more delineated kind of form. And uh, you can do this. Uh, you know, the great thing is you're still sculpting, so you really have a lot of control over how it's applied. It's not just a global effect. You can uh, vary it. You can uh, decide exactly where to concentrate the effect. And, you know, things like masking and hiding objects and all that are, are part of this process when you really get serious about modeling. I'm, I'm skipping over any of that right now because I you know, don't really need it here. Um, but certainly, you know, as you, with more complex models and, uh, and uh, more detail, you might need to do a little bit of uh, hiding here and there of uh, the parts you don't want to affect because you can use pretty broad brushes here. And, and where you apply the brush makes a difference, as you can see there. Applied it a little lower on that leg and it kind of scrunched up the area up above it or apply it closer to the seam and get that kind of nice divided effect. Very much in the spirit of sculpting. Um, here I'm using the Move tool and, and again it kind of pulls the elements apart because the, the seam is masked. Uh, combining that with a little bit of uh, inflate. And you know getting a nice little flare to those uh, foot pads or whatever they might be. And uh, by the way, inflate uh, tends to act a little bit different than magnify, which I used up on those first joints. Inflate tends to expand the geometry in a way that narrows the seam channel. You can see that as I work here. If you watch closely, you'll see that that channel gets very tight and narrow in some areas as I inflate the geometry around it. Whereas it tends to kind of spread apart, everything tends to kind of spread apart with magnify. So it's a it's a subtle difference, but kind of an important one. And again, with a little bit of uh, sculpting time and skill, you can really guide it and get some uh, nice subtle differences. Um, here I'm just bulging out the area in the body of this form, just to make it uh, a little more believable where these where this cluster of rods uh, plugs into the body. And here again, probably a little uh, hiding and additional masking wouldn't hurt, but that's uh, eh, all right. A couple of moves and I get something that looks uh, pretty convincing. And that's about all there is to it. Uh, so um, I guess I would put that, that uh, the, both those notions of, of inflating or uh, magnifying, using the inflate or the magnify tool, with the seams masked into, into one kind of general category of, of uh, manipulation of, uh, in and around these masked seams. Uh, but even after that, after you've done that, you can, uh, you can mix it up a little bit. Uh, for example, here I'm going to use the uh, smooth brush, 
And you can see you can make those joints have a, a bit more of an organic feel if that's where you want it to go. It's by applying a little smoothing, but the seams are still protected, so you're still going to retain quite a bit of uh, articulation there and detail. Uh, but for now, we'll just go ahead and, and leave it uh, in the more mechanical form, just undo that. Um, and uh, then you can take another tack, you can uh, flip the mask around. I'm just going to invert it here. So now um, only the seams are exposed, everything else is masked. And we're applying the smoothing to the seam itself. And you can see it sort of fills up. It's sort of the channel becomes uh, less deep, uh, spreads out a little bit. Again, just a subtle variation, but all of these things together. Again, especially when you get into models that have maybe broader seams or uh, more detail, uh, can be uh, can uh, give you quite a bit of variety in the final form. Um, all right, so now we've gone back to the unaltered uh, model, and uh, with the seams exposed, everything else masked out. I'm going to grab the smoothing brush, and I'm doing this at a distance partly because I've got this at. Uh, 2x anti-alias and I need a big brush so you can't really see what I'm doing here but I'm just applying full strength smoothing to the seams and we're going to zoom in here in a second and you can see the effect that had um, if you recall when we imported it they were very shallow channels hardly hardly noticeable and and by applying smoothing with this mask in this state they come they, they become very rounded uh, almost like little half circle channels. And that sets us up for uh, another technique. Uh, this time we're going to be, whereas before we were leaving the seam geometry alone for the most part, here we're really going to concentrate on the, the polygons of the seams themselves. And once again it's the magnify tool. And I just apply it with the seams exposed, everything else masked, and because of that pre-smoothing we did, we get this really nice flat edge. It's not just a trivial extrusion of that uh, of those seam rows. It has uh, that particular quality because of that pre-smoothing we did with the big brush just a moment ago. Again, pick your spot carefully here and magnify, and you get this wonderful fluted form, with the rods emerging from it. And again, even where it's very thin there, you see it's not just a, a knife edge. There's a Actually, a nice flat surface there. Uh, very clean, uh, very precise looking uh, stuff, even though it's, it's uh, freely sculpted and, again, can, can be uh, you know, uh, offset and biased in, in ways that make it look uh, uh, less mechanical and less trivial. And uh, some of the same stuff here. Again, this is where my impatience with uh, masking out some of those other things or hiding them. Uh, it's getting in the way a little bit, but that's okay. I'll just play until I get something that, uh, that I like. A couple undos there. And again, this is just the magnify tool. Oh, there, that, that, that looks all right. And of course, you can combine that with any other uh, tool. You might need to tweak these things and then move that up a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's, that's reasonably uh, convincing. So, you know, that's just, these are just a couple of many, many things you can do. Um, the seams and seam masking uh, with the uh, Globato OBJ imports into ZBrush.